Okay, welcome to uh, another Football Accelerator video here. Uh, we're here today with uh, Jacques Pugamu. You happy with me pronouncing your name like Jax? Yeah, that's it. It's only took me four years to get that right. <laughs> okay, yeah, so Jax is a, a very talented young man who came through our, our academy programme. Uh, and you are going back many years now to 2013. So it's fantastic of Jax to join us here today. Uh, I'm sure he's feeling the pressure of being under the, the camera. But just to paint a bit of background here, uh, Jax was a lad that joined us uh, in the summer of 2013. Uh, obviously raw and new to us at the time, uh, but we had massive, massive uh, hopes for him and he always showed that potential. He's actually gone on now and he's now uh, kind of playing for Southport in the Conference North, which, which to us is, is a professional standard of football. Uh, he's worked his way up through the leagues and uh, he is now, uh, he's become an emerging footballer and he has achieved what we would have all wanted him, him to do, really. So it's great to have him here. So thanks for coming, Jax. So first of all, where, where, where are you from then? Where do you live? What, like, origin? Yeah, where do you live originally and, and now in Manchester? Uh, Just so people understand a bit of a flavour of you, really. I was born in Guinea and then I moved here. In okay. 2004. In 2004? Yeah. How old was you then? I was like seven. Seven? Yeah. So you came to England at seven, to Manchester? Yeah. Okay. So obviously at that point, aspirations to be a footballer maybe? or When I first moved there, I didn't know what I was going to do at all. I just thought I was coming here, go to school, education, education, education. Mm. And then one day I just saw a ball, I was like, yeah, I like that. You like football? Yeah. Okay. And where did you go to school? What uh, high school? My first high school. North Grecian Street in Manchester. Right. Then I moved to Little Halton. Then I went to Bridgewater. Right. Then I went to St George's High School and then came to Perth. Right. So you've been around the block really on high schools. Yeah. Okay. Because you were always a very bright lad. Yeah. Surprised actually you went around that many high schools. <laughs> so it just goes to show, you know, it takes all different types, doesn't it? It's yeah. all different different routes. So did you enjoy school? Yeah, I actually liked it. Did you? Yeah. What was your favourite subject? If Ma you had maths. Maths? Maths and PE. Wow, we wouldn't have had that. I didn't know he was that sharp. You're in the wrong game. You shouldn't be a footballer. So maths, so okay, maths. So, so when did you first get into football then? Like when was your first team or, or whatever? My first team is back in 2007. I played for Booth Town Burners. I'm just a local team. Okay. Yeah, in Worsley. So that's like Sunday, Sunday Junior League? It was a Saturday League. And All right. I played for the age group above as well. Did you? Sundays, yeah. So you played a year up, basically, because you, you were good, probably big yeah. and strong and fast, yeah. Okay, well, that's good. So, obviously, you went into high school then. You probably played a lot of football in high school, I'd assume. Mm -hmm. I can imagine the PE teachers would want you to do everything in high school, I can bet. <laughs> but you, you were then leaving high school. Yeah. So what was your thought process then? Because I know out then what happened, but what was you thinking on leaving high school? Uh, I had my subjects that I was going to do in college. I planned to go to Pendleton College to okay. do... Psychology, law, and maths. Right. And then I saw Joe Crossley. He was like, he's going to a football academy. He was like, yeah, that's something I need to go to. Right. So I came down, I saw you guys, and then you sorted me out, and then I was on the course. Yeah, yeah. So I remember, yeah, you came with your friends, didn't you, Joe Crosley, and yeah. there was the other lads you came with. And uh, that's kind of how it happens sometimes in football. It's a lucky break, isn't it? Because you, you obviously, like you say, you're going to go to Pendleton College, and I don't know where that would have took you in a football sense. You might have still made it. Yeah. I, can't, I can't say you wouldn't. But I think the decision you made to join our football academy kept, probably kept you in football, I would yeah, say. Yeah, kept me focused. Yeah, yeah, it did, yeah. So what kind of, like, what kind of football did you play then at that academy? What, what, was, what happened there in the football output? Uh, I went in it. It's like we trained every day. Mm -hmm. It was like full-time. Yeah. So, and I was a winger as well. Mm -hmm. I remember I that. I started off as a winger. I remember my first session, I was sharp. I got the ball, I took like a couple of guys and, yeah. and I, like, I showed you went over and I saw your face like, yeah. <laughs> did I, remember, it I remember that. Did like, I look buzzing? I was like, he's like, he's a good player. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, well, I did. Listen, you, straight away, you, you, you're quite an alarming player because, you know, you're explosive and you're quick. He was a winger then, you're right. You were number seven and, yeah, maybe the end product wasn't there and stuff. Yeah. So we're thinking, maybe is he a winger in the end? But I don't know. I played you on the wing because you were fast and effective. Yeah. Uh, it has transpired now that obviously you, you've changed position, which I think is a fantastic move. So, so yeah, so you joined FETA, you enrolled on the course. So it was, you know, FETA, and I can speak about FETA because it's, you know, an academy I run and love that, you know, it's, it's sadly not operating as it did right now. But, you know, it, it was the kind of place to give lads a chance. We had all the waifs and strays, I think you would agree. The standard of players, was it quite varied, did you think? Yeah, there's some players that just came for like for the fun of it. Mm. Where I was like, yeah, 
this is an opportunity I need to take with both hands yeah. and progress as a player. Like you and Elliot Rocker, yeah, I would say. Yeah, Elliot, yeah. Some of us took it seriously, didn't they? And yeah. have gone on to play well in, you know, the, the football club we currently run now, Manchester Central. We have about eight ex fetter students playing for us who are now, you know, 18, 19, 20, and they're doing really well. So, yeah, at Fetter, there was lads that took it serious, but it did take a certain drive from people like you yeah. and Elliot Rocker to keep turning up, keep playing in games when you might have even got hammered one week, Keep playing in the teams where you had a really varied group of lads with you. You might be thinking he's no good, but you always turned up. The thing yeah. I loved about you, you didn't you didn't live around the corner, and you were always there. And I think a real good pointer for any young footballers moving forward it is about commitment, loyalty, perseverance, yeah. all that kind of. And you had that, and I know you had that. So I'm really I'm really glad you obviously you, you recognise your time at Feta was helpful. Obviously, while you were at Feta. Uh, you played for some other teams. You played for Earlham, didn't you? Yeah. I believe. And how how did that go? That's where it all started, like yeah, centre back. Yeah, yeah. at Earlham you played centre back. Yeah. Yeah. I went there for the under 18s and the manager. I went there as a midfielder. Yeah. yeah. And the manager was like, uh, Jack, I don't think you're a midfielder. I think you're a centre half. Mm. So I played there the season and I did really well. And the first team manager for Earlham came and he's like, Yeah, I like you. And he started playing me left back right. <laughs> for the first team and then. Obviously, after that, I kept on playing, playing, playing. And I told him I was a centre-back, and then he gave me one opportunity to play centre-back, and then pressed him. Mm. And then he was like, yep, that's my position. And then once the season was pre-season, mm. I played centre-back like all the games, and then I secured that position, and it was my position, and I played there all season. Yeah, well, well, there you go, and then you, you know, got a lot to thank Erlen for then, really, and the coach in particular, who decided to put your centre-back. And that's a great thing, really, because I'm sure when he told you, or maybe you were like, mm, I'm not sure, yeah. but I know what you'll have been like. You'll have embraced it, and you'll have played. I know the coaches at Feta, certainly uh, one of my good friends, Rob Green, who, who uh, used to work at Feta, he probably fancied you as a defender. Yeah. He'd been known to move people around. I, I, just, was, I did start playing like towards the end of my career as a defender. As a defender, yeah, because yeah. we cottoned on to it, what Erlen were doing. So yeah, so obviously you move position, which I think to any young aspiring emerging footballers out there, you've got to be flexible, haven't you? You can't just say I'm a winger or you can't just say I'm a right back. You've got to be very flexible, haven't you? Yeah. And play where, you, play where you're told as well or where the coach recognises would be your best position. So obviously you went to Erlen and you played a lot of football then in the North West Counties, didn't yeah. you? Because I always tracked you, to be honest, and I always looked out how you were doing. And I know, did you get player of the season? Yeah, I got uh, player of the season. Yeah? Yeah. I got like, 12 man of the matches and then did you? player this season and yeah, wow. that was it. Brilliant. Well, listen, I know, and I know you did that because while you were there, we tracked you and we used to always talk about you. All the lads that left kind of my, what I used to do with them, we always liked to track them and see how they were getting on and we were really proud of how you did it, really. Uh, so you have done amazingly well because you went from, FET, from school to the football academy where we found you, we got you on, we tried to point you in the right direction because we kind of point you and then let you do it because that, you're the footballer, really, not us. So you did that, you went to Earlham, then you went to Radcliffe Borough and had a good time there, did you? Or You missed one out. Go on, what's the other one? I went to Bangor. Oh, you went to, oh, of course went you to went Bangor. to Bangor. Yeah, yeah, didn't you play in, you played in there, was like qualifiers of the... They did, but I wasn't there. Right, you weren't involved. Yeah, you went to Bangor, how did that, what happened with that then? Um, I went to, after Earlham, I went to, I had Charles with crew. Oh yeah, yeah. For like three weeks, but they wanted me to sign for under 23s, but the, there was like some some understanding between the first team manager and the okay. team, so I didn't get on. And then Mark Wright and yeah. Alan Lewis out of Southport saw me play against Stoke and they liked me, so right. And they were working at Bangor at that time, oh, so right. I went there to train and I signed for Bangor for a year. But it was difficult for me to get there because I wasn't yeah, driving yeah. then, right? So yeah, yeah. I had to come back here and find another team. You play more low, Clip Radcliffe, yeah. So obviously, Bangor was a good sh was a good shout for you because obviously a big step up that playing the Welsh Premier League and I know they they get into like European competitions and stuff. So yeah, and I understand the travel implications and that. Yeah. So that's the so opportunities opportunities can just uh, arrive, can't they, in football? Yeah. As long as you're doing the right thing on the pitch and playing well and doing the right you know doing the right things and got your head about you, opportunities can just spark up. So obviously the Bangor thing, and then it went to Radcliffe Borough. Yeah. And now obviously I used to manage Radcliffe Borough, so I had a good handle on what was going on there, and I watched and, and I seen that you were you were performing well. Did you enjoy your time there? You did well there, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, I really liked it. It was good. Yeah. It's a different like different level. 
Yeah, he was challenging as well. Bit more grit and yeah, yeah blood and blood and thunder. Yeah, down near the bottom of the league, you got to put it in, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I think obviously you know the guys like uh, Bill Prendergast. That, that Bill's a good guy, good coach. You know, I know he'd be keen to to see how you develop as a player. I think being at a level like Radcliffe, yeah, you have to play yeah. because if you're in the back line at Radcliffe, you're defending week in week out, yeah. and that would bring you on as a footballer. So yeah. I think you know there's a lot to be said for the, your time there as well, as well as Elliot. Uh, and obviously I took Elliot to Radcliffe, so a different view on that for me, but seeing you at Radcliffe made me feel a bit proud, really. Yeah. So obviously then, you know, we're getting to the point where you've gone from Radcliffe and you've, you've been signed by Southport, yep. which is a big, big team in my eyes. Yeah, you know, when I was tough. a footballer for Morecambe, we used to have some really big games against Southport, Boxing Day, New Year's Day, big crowds on. I always recognise Southport as a, a very good, big club who would give lads a chance, yeah. uh, unlike some other clubs, but they'll give you a chance. What do you think about this then? Yo, it's a great opportunity to be honest. Like, I know the manager also got a good connection there, and the players are like really like they're on my age as well. So. Oh, are they quite a young team? Yeah, it's quite a young team, so it's good. Right, and you think you played yesterday against Blackpool? Yeah, I played against Blackpool. How did that go? Did you feel was that your debut for Southport? Or? Yeah, it's my debut. How did it go? It's a it's a good game. Yeah, like it's even like until like just before half time before they scored. Right, and then. After that, second half, they brought a different team on. Right. And I think we was a bit kind of tired a little bit because we had the same 11. Right. And, and they came on. They and came on. Came strong. But did you do anything good in the game that stood out? Any fans remember you after that debut, do you think? What did uh, you do? Anything that stood out? I did one thing that stood out. Go on. One of the Blackpool players did a pass into midfield and I stepped in, intercepted it, drove with the ball forward, fed it to the striker and then asked for it back. But it <laughs> <didn't> <laughs> you got the one too. So, All right. And he shot and he missed. He missed. But it yeah. looked like you were coming out from the back. Yeah. A bit like Rio Ferdinand type style yeah. and playing playing from the back. Well, that's your style, you know. Listen, playing the way you can as a footballing centre back. I'd like to think I was a bit like that myself when I was younger. Not Probably not as talented as you, to be honest. I had to work a bit harder than you, maybe. Yeah. You probably got a bit more raw talent than I ever had. So if you're playing out from the back and joining in and stepping into midfield, then that's priceless. I'm thinking you could do that, and maybe if that's how you're going to play, what do you think you can achieve from here now? So not just with Southport, what do yeah. you think as a young man you could do from this point in football? What do you think? What's... The only thing I could do is get better, to be honest. Yeah, I've got a lot of things I need to improve on. Like, I'm still raw. I've never been coached like mm -hmm. full-time like by a like, professional club, yeah. By a personal club, so yeah. I think it's going to be a big step up if I learn all these things and do what they tell me. I yeah. think I've got a good way. I, like, I can step up a lot into the league football. Yeah, so you'd like to become league footballer? Yeah. F really full-time pro? Yeah. I know, for me, I, I class Southport as a full-time club, really. Maybe they're not in terms of the training, but in terms of the environment and where they've been in the past. But you'd like to maybe reach the higher echelons of, of pro football into yeah. the league? Yeah. Uh, you think you can do it? Yeah, I, I can do yeah. it. I can do it. The managers believe in me. I believe in myself yeah. and I think I would do it. Well, I think I can. I speak for the lads that worked in my academy and myself. You know, we, we knew it from day one. You're going back four years now when we first seen you. And I'm not surprised by what you're doing at all. I'm not surprised. I think you can play a good level of league football. Mm -hmm. I also think you are a bright lad and understand that you need to listen. You need support. You need a guiding hand. You need to work hard when you're not at the club. Yeah. So when you're away from the club physical, mental, diet, yeah. everything, all that stuff, you're going to need to tick the boxes, aren't you? Yeah. And I think you're the man to do it, to be honest. So going back to the start, one of the reasons why I'm doing this interview for, for kind of the Football Accelerator programme of myself trying to help young footballers. So we're looking at you going back to the start. Would you advise players to, to join some kind of programme like you did at, at FETA and, and Academy and try and exploit every opportunity from there? Would you advise young footballers to do that? I think so, it's a good thing to do. It's a good thing. Yeah. Like, for, like from, from my point of view, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, it worked for you. I wanted to do education as well. Yeah. And this, like, the programme does both together. Yeah. So it's, it's going to keep you, like, well-educated and yeah. like, it's going to train you well for football as well. So it's a good programme. Yeah, that's what I think. So no matter where it is around the country, for me, it's about, yeah, if you're not one of the elite youth or young players... You, you would probably be at a pro club. Yeah, you might need to join a college, like a further education college, like maybe the Manchester College and do your A-levels and stuff. But you've got to be part of a football programme. Yeah. So luckily through me now, I've got, you know me, I've been doing this for many, many years now. We've got lots of avenues to, to exploit for young people. Yeah. They can come to things I run personally. They can go to big establishments like Manchester College and places like that. Uh, 
but they've got to be within a football framework. So that's what we're creating, really. We've got Manchester Central Football Club. We've got a lot of football partners ar- around the country. So we're just trying to help young people, really, and give them advice. Try to make them be able to become what you are. Yeah. You, it was easy for you because you're really, really talented. Yeah. What we need is the ones that, are, that could get to it but need a bit more help. So that's what we're here to do, really. So do you think lads should maybe listen to me and maybe get some guidance off yeah, me if definitely. they can? Definitely. I listen to you and look yeah. what I am, so <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Perfect. Well, on that note, listen, it's been fantastic, mate. I know we're going to do a little something else in a, in a few moments, but it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you one-to-one one again. And uh, watch this space for, for, for Jack Ez, I'd say. Put it <laughs> there, son. Good lads. Thanks. Right, so I'm here with uh, the founder of Football Accelerator, Paul Maguire and New Southport signing Jackies. So Paul, when did you first see Jackies? Well, I first saw him, he turned up to a training session. I think it was at the Amity Centre in Fallowfield. He turned up with his mates and he just looked like a little bit of a skinny guy, you know, and I didn't really know what he was doing and a bit erratic, but then I think as he alluded to earlier, we put him on the pitch and he played and he was he was stand out. He looked class. So he looked, it's at that point like a flying winger. So yeah, first time I seen him, he came down with his mates to, to uh, an academy kind of taste the day. I'm glad he did. Yeah. First impressions are always key in football. What yeah. were your first impressions of Jack? I thought he had a lot of raw ability. I think everyone that clapped eyes on him would say it. it didn't take a miracle to see it. You know, he had total raw ability. Really fast. Uh, really direct. And yeah, just had a, and you know what? had a great attitude, smile on his face. Whereas a lot of the lads we had at our academy, you know, a bit grumpy and a bit moody. Jack's had a smile on his face and he played like he enjoyed football. So, yeah, that was my impression of him. So, Jack, first of all, congratulations on the move to Southport. Obviously, they're pretty much a professional club in our eyes. When you joined Paul at Fetter a few years back, did you ever honestly think you'd end up at a team like that? I always had it in my mind that I was going to be up there. So, yeah, I had to think that. Was it your desire to go up the leagues, do you think, yeah. that has helped you move? I thought well, to be honest, I wanted to like get into under twenty threes to to help me with that development phase that I've not had yet. But going to Southport is gonna help me out a lot, playing first team football. So it's, it's a good opportunity. Yeah, well knowing Paul, probably Paul said, if you work hard it's possible. Yeah. Is that what he said? And did you believe him? Yeah, I, I did. I believed everything he said. <laughs> <laughs> I probably forced it, I probably had my hands around his throat at the time. But I think we said it to everyone, didn't we? Yeah. You, you listen to what I'm not trying to say that, but I remember stood on the Astro, you know, on that 2G Astro turf at the Armitage yeah. Centre on them like times when the balls would be blowing around <laughs> everywhere. And he used to always get his in and say, look, just focus, concentrate. Football's not, not insurmountable. Yeah. And I played, I went from working in a bedding factory in the middle of Chadderton to playing on Sky Sports and Match of the Day in front of thousands of people for Morecambe. I did that in probably the space of a couple of years from nothing. So I knew you could all do it. You always had a big head start on me because you actually came to our Academy Taster Days. So I did say to them all, if you work hard and apply yourself, you can do it. And he did. He did. That's great. Now, Jack, you've obviously worked with lots of great coaches throughout your time at Earlham, Radcliffe, Feta, Bangor and Southport now. Is there any points that you think have given you the best lessons for football? All of them. Like, everywhere I've been, I've learned something that's helped me a lot. Has that helped you develop into the player you are today? Yeah, definitely. So, obviously, it all started somewhere, and I've got some photos here from when you first started <laughs> Feta. And it's you when look like you... a little skinny run. <laughs> from, from or he definitely doesn't look like he is today. So, if you two just want to oh. have a look about that, just talk us through some of the photos on there, mate. Well, this one here, yeah. that one was my, like, my first game for Fetter, really, mm. back in 2013. Mm. And then that one was a game in the FAU Cup against FC United at the Moss Rose. Yeah, Marcus. you played for well, both all in Macclesfield Town kits, yeah. aren't they? Obviously, we had a big partnership with Macclesfield Town, I, I still work there. So we tried to create some opportunities for lads to, to develop and grow at Macclesfield. Uh, the lads played countless games, but yeah, that's Jack's playing on, is that Salford Sports Village? Yeah, Salford Sports Village. And the Greaves, a good friend of mine, was the coach. I don't know, if, was you winning there, do you reckon, or what? I don't know, are you getting to tell him off? That was a tough session. That was, was it? a tough game, I remember Anthony was very harsh. And was... Anthony's a harsh <laughs> coach. Firm but fair. And this one, Macclesfield Town, do you remember that? I remember that, I'll never yeah, forget that I against FC that. United. Do you remember, remember that, yeah. what happened on that day? Ah, uh, is it... I played as a winger. Well, I didn't have a really good game. I don't think I had a good good game. 
But we still won the game. That we won the game, didn't we? We beat FC United, who were a very yeah. strong team at the time. Paul Riley scored a cracker. That's so right. Goal. Yeah, I remember uh, that. And that. Yeah, he did, actually, yeah. And I think it was a bit of a record for a crowd at, at the Master Rose watching a Youth Cup game because yeah. it was FC United. They brought a lot of fans. So, yeah, good memories, that. I think that's the team, isn't it? Yeah. You've got, like, yeah. Milan and Jamar and Kaya Baxter and yeah. another people, Paul Riley. Am I right good. in thinking that it was FC United's first actual time in the FA Youth Cup that year when you beat them. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, he's right, isn't it? Because they made a quite a big thing of it because of yeah. that and bought quite a few fans, a couple of coach loads. So yeah, it was. It was FC United. It's quite a big thing, big big game to play. And I think that one's Geisley away, isn't it? Yeah, that's Geisley. In the football conference on a Wednesday. Do you remember anything about that game? I think I was there, actually. Uh, I started playing midfield as a midfielder in that game. Did you? Yeah. I think you were centre mid that game, weren't you? Yeah. Tough game, Geisley, a very good team at that level, but... Uh, Again, another real random group of lads in our, in our Macclesfield Town team there. So, yeah, no good memories there, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. Should give him there. <laughs> so, just on a football accelerator point of view, Paul obviously wants to help young players yeah. emerge. Do you think the young players should listen to Paul and take Paul's advice to help progress going abroad and whatnot to play football? He's, he's been there, he's played mm. football, he's got the knowledge, so I don't see why they should listen to him. Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Would we agree that Paul could maybe help the young players with creating opportunities, finding clubs and working on the game? Yeah, he's, he's been doing that already. Mm. He did it with Elliot at Ratcliffe Borough mm. and he's, they've set up a Manchester Central and mm. they're going in the right direction. Yeah. A lot of lads there, a lot of good raw lads. He'll know yeah. them, next festival lads like your Corey, Nice, Dan Parker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Lo loads of players there from. So, yeah. But no, I appreciate him saying that. Listen, this is why we're doing it. It's why we're interviewing some of our former guys, guys that are now becoming real big emerging players within the game. This guy could go to the top. And I'd love to think I had a handle in that. Even in the slight, even if it was 1%, yeah. I'm taking that 1% and <laughs> running with it. But I think it's probably a bit more than 1%. So, yeah. we'll see. We'll add that up when you get in the Prem. Yeah. <laughs> now, obviously, as you've progressed, you've got tips off different coaches. Yeah. What type of tips would you give to the young players like yourself that want to progress as well? Stay focused. Like, don't. If you if you're still in ed, like educa education, do both of it at the same time because you never know. To be honest, stay focused. Go to the gym. For me personally, I don't drink. I eat healthy. You know, I need to. I need to be like be the athlete that I want to be now instead of waiting for the time to come. So I just prepare myself now for the opportunity. Yeah, that's great, yeah. great to hear, by the way, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah. great. Priceless. Now, Paul, how challenging is it to help players such as Jack that came from your academy? Uh, well, listen, at that academy, it was challenging because, you know, we had a real wide range of abilities and attitudes and ethics. You know, like I say, you have your Jacks and your Elliots. All, you know, we were probably players number one and two all the way to down to players 75 and 76. You know, so it is a challenge. You have to just cherry pick them. You have to decide which ones you think you're worth helping. I remember convincing Jax to, to play for Maxfield Town in the FA Youth Cup when he wanted to play for Earlham. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah that. he remembers that. <laughs> I had to convince him to play for Mac Town. Now, maybe that was selfish because I wanted a, a quality player in our team. But So you do pick them and then you kind of get into them. Elliot was the same. I had to not exactly convince Elliot to play for us at a joint fetter, but... You know, I did really, I had to sell it to them and I had to tell them that something can come for this. And you know what, I'm so glad I can look back and think it did. It wasn't a bit, you know, a bit of a figment of my imagination. So it is a challenge, but you pick the best ones and then you kind of, you kind of run with it and, and see what you can do with them. So it is, it is a great example of that. It's a challenge, but you pick the best ones. Also, what ways do you intend to do this in the future? with clients from the Football Accelerator? Well, look, the whole uniqueness of the Football Accelerator is, Jack had been talking to Jack about that, is I used to have to get all the lads to come to me, so they had to be on our programme. But now I'm trying to do it where they don't have to come to a programme, I will do it individually and one-to-one. -one. So if they become a client of the Football Accelerator, they get all the kind of prior knowledge, all the information I built up, maybe even get opportunities to speak and chat with people like Jack's. Uh, certainly chat to our lads that have gone over to Australia now to play. You know, we're, we're, we're setting up a system through the Football Accelerator where they can hopefully have some one-to-one -one time with, with players that have done what they want to do. So that's the way to do it, really. It's, it's, it's groundbreaking, it's unique. It is what we call a course, and effectively it's online. 
the world's going online. It's, it's all about that now. So this is a, a football accelerator program, which is about mentoring uh, and online and delivering a course for four to eight weeks. And we're hoping that that snapshot can do exactly what Jack's done. New, challenging, can it work? I don't know, but if we work with a thousand people, which is the plan, and it works for 10 people, and 10 people get similar to what Jack's done, it'll be a big, big success. Now that seems like a great idea. So is that how you intend to help UK and overseas players? Yeah, if they're in the UK, they can do an eight-week course where they get my mentorship. Uh, so, that, you know, eight-week programme and see where it takes them. Uh, again, a lot of accountability on them, a lot of onus on the individual to do it. Uh, for overseas guys, because as you know, at, at my football club currently now, we have uh, uh, people from all kind of countries that play for us. We obtained international clearance and they now play competitive league football for, for Manchester Central. And they can get scouted from there and they can see people, you know, if they do really well for us, they will move on. So yeah, if they're, if they're an overseas guy, they live, you know, Asia or Africa or wherever, they can, they can uh, join as a client of the Football Accelerator. They can do a four-week programme, which involves all the stuff which is built into the four-week uh, package and we can hopefully get them to England to become footballers so we'll see groundbreaking unique I think it can work we'll see hopefully we'll make a few more Jack Eddie. I don't know <laughs> maybe well thanks guys Paul anything you want to add or say to Jack uh, no listen I'm just really proud of him uh, you know like I say I, they probably think I've, I don't know what they're up to what they're doing but I know everything you, you know uh, how much I look up to these guys and look out for how they're doing and, and track them even from a distance I'd like to go and watch him play. I'd like to go and watch the likes of him and Elliot play. I think we should all be going to watch lads like Elliot for Tranmere and, and Jack for Southport. Uh, and just follow them and track them and hope that what I did played some part, and my staff that worked for me, had some part of him achieving his dreams where he's going to today. So listen, I'm really proud, mate. Really proud. Thanks. Keep it going. When you're in the Prem, buy me a car. <laughs> all right? <laughs> all right. Thanks, fellas. Good. Right. Thank Cheers. you. Paul.